what appeared to be a cave that was safe from the winter blizzard turns into a baking oven. The players found themselves trapped in a nest where salamanders come to lay their eggs. The players hear the roars of the salamander young. Fire snakes. Fire snakes are CR1 creatures with a variety of defenses and offenses that make it a challenge, especially at level 1. They take half damage to all physical damage that is non-magical, are immune to fire, and deal fire damage to any who strike them in melee. Additionally, they have two attacks, both of which deal extra fire damage. We are going to take them up an extra notch by giving a fire snake a fire breath cone attack and another fire snake a poisonous bite just to keep the players on their toes. But don't worry, the players will find some trinkets and events to make this easier. The first part of this encounter, the players will enter combat with a fire snake. This will mark phase one. They take one fire damage at the beginning of each round from the cave beginning to heat up. Players feel it's going to get even hotter and will take even more damage the longer they stay in this cave but inform the players that they feel a cool breeze from the next set of rooms, either to the east or the south. This marks phase two of the encounter. The players will gain inspiration as they enter the next set of rooms and may spend a hit dice to regain hit points and regain one spell slot of choice as they are making progress with the encounter. The rooms ahead are not affected by the increased heat at the beginning of the cave. However, if they ran past the fire snake from the first encounter, it will chase them here. If they did defeat it, they may take a short rest here as well. There is an obelisk here with runes on it. The runes can be read with Arcana 13 or Religion 13. They give fire resistance for one hour to one character who touches it. The obelisk cannot be used again for 24 hours. The obelisk runes denote that it belonged to a Dwergar slave clan that the salamanders used to take care of their young. There are no signs of the Duergar in this cavern, at least recently. Upon touching the obelisk, the room begins to heat up again as before, dealing one fire damage at the beginning of the round, and then two, and so on for each round. The players, though, feel cool air from the next set of rooms. If they do not touch the obelisk, but leave the room, the tunnels begin heating up again, dealing one fire damage, then two, and so on. The players, again, will feel cold air from the next set of rooms ahead. But, upon entering the tunnels of the next room, a fire snake crawls out from a heat vent from the wall. It has a fire breath attack action that deals 3d6 fire damage to all in a 15-foot cone of the creature half damage on a dexterity save DC 13. This has a recharge of 5 to 6. It chases the players if they run to the next set of rooms which are colder. Upon entering the next room, the player gains inspiration and 5 hit points and may refresh one use of any class feature they have or regain one spell slot of their choice. The fire snake with fire breath will chase them into the room if they did not kill it. If they do, they may take a short rest. This room contains another obelisk with runes on it. The runes can be read with Arcana or Religion 13. This obelisk contains the heat controls for the cavern. The players can cause the device to malfunction and freeze the caverns with a DC 13 Arcana or Religion. On a failure, the heat is permanently stuck and begins to rise, dealing one damage each round and increasing by one each round. On a success, the caverns start dealing one cold damage per round. If the cold damage is turned on, three fire snakes will flood the cavern trying to flee. They will have half health and they will fight only if engaged in melee. If the fire damage is turned on, one fire snake will come out of the ceiling. This one has a poisonous bite that will put characters to sleep on a failed con save, DC 13. This save can be repeated at the end of their character's turn. Either way, the players will feel a fresh breeze coming from the tunnels as before, the tunnels leading out. These tunnels have lessened effects of the freezing or burning of the environment controls. The fire snakes will chase the players out and then flee into the wilderness as they are scared of leaving their nests. If the fire damage is turned on, they will go back into the caves where they are safe. 
Outside of the cave is treasure piled up from slain wanderers who did not survive. It has tooth marks and scorches on it. There is another obelisk nearby with more runes. It is instructions for the Dwergar to take this loot from the Fire Snake Young before they destroy it. And it's from the Salamander Guardians. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this CR1 encounter with Fire Snakes. It was really fun to build. I loved the ambient danger of it that kind of prodded the characters along, but also the ability of the encounter to give the players defenses that they would need to overcome each event. If you wanted to run this encounter for a party of third level characters, I would recommend giving all the fire snakes fire breathing, and also increase the fire damage per round that the cave deals to them at a rate of plus two instead of plus one. For a party of fifth level characters, I would make the same changes as the third level party, fire snakes having all breathing, increased fire damage rate per round, but also there would be a salamander, which is a CR5 creature, standing guard at the end of the cave, trying to block the party in while its young have a chance to feast on the party. Either that, or it will take vengeance for its slain young. The next encounter video will be CR2, the Ettercap's web jungle. A gloomy jungle has been taken over by a druid ettercap, turning it into a slaughterhouse. See you then.